Well, if you haven't picked up your tickets yet for the Virtual Outdoor Expo, you're gonna want to because we are about to give away a door prize for early birds. We're gonna draw a ticket on February 15th at the Maryland Arsenal Grand Opening. You could win a seven night getaway. The early bird door prize winner will be selected on 215, so get your tickets today. You're automatically entered to win this and tons of other awesome prizes when you purchase your ticket for the Medina Media Virtual Outdoor Expo. Plus, the ticket sales go toward raising money for Battle 22 and the Dark Horse Project. And live entertainment, hello! The event is right around the corner, kicking off March 4th, streaming live each day until the 7th and active for you to revisit for another 30 days with musical performances by Shane Gamble, The Amish Outlaws, and country star Tyler Farr. So get your tickets today and be entered to win this door prize and tons more. So make sure that you check out our Facebook event page and stay tuned for more details. Here we go. We're kicking it off. We're really doing this, John Watkins. How are you today, my friend? Well, a little nervous. A little uh, nervous. First time doing this, but happy to be by your side. Thanks, man. I wouldn't have anybody, I would not prefer to have anybody else here to keep me comfortable and excited, and motivated. So welcome, everybody welcome to Strange Famous. My name is Caroline with Medina Media Productions. I'm here with my friend John Watkins. Um, he is with BMC Insurance. And we're just going to, you know, kick this off by saying welcome. Welcome to this fun little adventure we're going to call a podcast. Like it. <laughs> like it. John and I go way back, and um, we do a lot of fun stuff together in the community, so I thought I'd bring him in and have him co-host with me today. Um, but John is known for his, you know, million-dollar smile, basically. <laughs> Goes around town and connects people and networks them, um, and that's how we met. So John actually was uh, coaching a basketball team, I believe, when we met first. Uh, I didn't know what that relationship was going to turn into. I had no idea. I just thought this big, tall, goofy, you know, basketball coach out there yelling at kids. <laughs> and, and he came up to my daughter after the game, and Angie was playing on a boys, like, streetball league, basically, schooling all these boys. She made a couple boys cry that she, summer. She was hooping. Yeah, it was fun to watch. But he came up, and he said, man, you're a natural athlete. And she that stuck with her, like, Probably for a few weeks, she talked about how much she loved playing on that league and stuff. So then here we go, you know, getting teamed up. Um, I think we met through a couple of networking events, and then John and I just became friends. And now we're doing all kinds of magical stuff together. We're working with the Mental Health Association um, to raise some money. We did a really cool video together last year. And I, get, I think the goal of this whole podcast is to continue growing relationships and having fun doing that. So I would love to hear from you, I guess, where you are with um, BMC, what's going on in the world of BMC. I know that you guys saved me a bunch of money by switching to BMC. I think I saved like $700 on my insurance policy by yep. switching. So Ho Home, auto, and liability. Mm -hmm. um, and now I have health insurance through you guys too. Yep. Yeah. Yep. There's mm -hmm. really nothing that we can't do at BMC. Um, we start with the process of working with the client, um, either a business or family, um, seeing what the market has for them, um, comparing their current policies, seeing if there's any holes, um, and also seeing if there's savings. Um, right. So for yeah. you, it was savings, and we matched the policies. Um, and who doesn't want to save 690 <laughs> some dollars a year? Well, I love BMC because you guys do so much to give back. I mean, you see the logo at Fisk, at the soccer field in Frederick. You know, you see you guys donating food to the food bank and giving back to the community. And then again, you're on the board for MHA, mm -hmm. which I know BMC supports MHA too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a good blend uh, for me personally. Um, it's a great blend uh, to represent them in the business community with mm -hmm. families, friends, um, because we do right by people. Um, and we do partake in the community. Uh, it goes back to, I mean, for me, helping people. Um, just a simple thing that I did for your daughter after seeing her play and hoop and school, <laughs> many uh, boys. Mm -hmm. And she, she, I mean, she held her own and she kept her head up. That mm -hmm. was the key. Um, I, I, I like watching youth play sports. Um, I have twin sons, I coach them in multiple sports and a grouping of kids that I've watched grow up. But my key is effort and attitude. Those right. are the only two things you can control. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, you can carry that into the work, you can carry that into your personal life. But if you can control that, then you are shining, mm -hmm. especially in today's society. Right. So speaking of, you know, sports in general, we just had the old big game this weekend, which I didn't even know who was playing. That's how much I'm into football. So I'm hoping that you can give me the rundown, like, what happened. I, all I've heard about is the weekend's performance. That's all I've heard about. I'm like, that's all anybody talks about in my world in football. I'm like, um, so who played at the Super Bowl? <laughs> so clueless. Well, first I wanted to thank the people behind the scenes, oh, Jay. Okay. Mike, uh, for the podcast and everything. Um, it's professional. It's run well. Um, to your roots back in New England, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that Super Bowl. <laughs> I am not a Patriots fan. Uh -huh. I am not a Tampa fan, but I am a fan of Tom Brady. I was going to say, if, everybody loves Brady, right? Oh, you have to, yeah. because he is humble, mm -hmm. and he does say the right things. And he won seven Super Bowls, and there's not a team that has more. Right. Yeah. He individually has that, but he always credits his team. He never talks about himself. It's always about the people around him. Yeah. It was tough. I mean, seeing all the people in the stands, I know everybody's like, oh, they've all been vaccinated, and all the people there were vaccinated. And I'm like, bro, like, if we can get that many people into one stadium, can't I just go watch my daughter play basketball live? Like, can I just go to a game? This is ridiculous. I'm sorry, but... I bet if there was millions of dollars worth of sponsorship on the line for my daughter's game, I'd have been able to be there. Right? I bet you you're right. Yeah. So, vaccination or not, yeah, it's a little frustrating being a parent or an athlete right now, but at least they're getting to play. I'm just going to say that. At least they're getting to play. You know, sports are continuing. Life is going on. Moving forward, right? It may so, look a little different. Yeah. It might look a little different, but it's still happening one way or another. Mm -hmm. So, we're getting there. Um, and so let's talk about the Catoctin affair really quick. Right? I would love to. Yeah. So last year, because of COVID, we had to cancel some stuff like that. The Catoctin affair, a lot of these basketball games, everything's getting kind of put on hold. So we came up with a creative way to kind of raise money last year. And that's when John and I really like got to know each other. So he, he calls me and he's like, I have an idea. And I'm like, oh, okay, what's your idea? And I was walking my dog, and I'll never forget it. And he started singing Stand By Me on the phone. I'm like, okay, John, what's happening right now? <laughs> He's like, I just want to make a video. I want to make a video with this song in it. I'm inspired by this song. And so long story short, we ended up making this really cool compilation video, and I got a bunch of my friends that are musical artists. And that was one of the events in my life that inspired me to want to do this, is like how I saw... I know a lot of really strange, famous, like weird people that are like in their own aspect, like you're famous in what you do in your area, you're a coach, you're a big influencer for a lot of people, you're on a bunch of boards. How do you continue doing stuff with the Catoctin Affair this year? After what we did last year, it was like a virtual fundraiser. What are we going to do this year to take it up a notch? Because I think we got some plans, right? Yeah, let's rewind for one sec. Okay, all right, all right. Caroline keeps myself. saying we. And she's not giving herself the credit that she deserves. So I might have come up with the song, and Rebecca Lehman of the Mental Health Association, she does development, and I help her run a committee of development for MHA, Mental Health Association of Frederick County. She came up with this idea using the song and pulled her resources, and we helped support her but she came up with this. So mm -hmm. thank you for that. There's a lot of time. It's a lot of commitment and your brilliance in that video. And also, Catoctin Affair is the main event for Mental Health Association from a fundraising perspective. It's 22 years old. For the first 21 years, we had it where there's 400 to 500 people dressed up, black tie, giving back to our organization, a lot of fun, but a very serious event and for a wonderful organization. I've been a board member for four years. It's an honor to be a board member and to represent such a wonderful organization that can impact so many different lives mm -hmm. here in Frederick, Hagerstown, and surrounding areas. We had to pivot and do this event and not be in person. Caroline helped us with this video, and if you haven't seen it, go to her. My YouTube, yeah. It's on my YouTube. It's on my Facebook channel. You know, we had a lot of fun making that video. It this will is like bring an you awesome to tears. memory. And it was actually right in this building, right around the corner, 
yep. right here at Vocal Inc. So we went in the studio over here and recorded that video. So I had a bunch of a bunch of my friends that are musicians came in and we all sang it together and then we cut it all up and made this big promo video and it was a pretty emotional time. It was pretty fun. Right yeah. when COVID kind of was just fresh on all of our we didn't really know what we were really up against yet. And yeah. And here we are, a year later, doing yep. it again. And we're going to be doing something special this year. Um, I can't go into the, the complete details because we don't know what will have to change with COVID. But we do know the date. It is going to be May 8th, uh, 2021 at the Frederick Fairgrounds. And it is going to be called An Evening of Shining Light on the Mental Health in Our Community. Uh, we would love for your support um, to tune in virtually or to bring a, a car full of people um, and see the event live. Um, it's going to be fun, uh, and it's very supported, um, and we appreciate everybody that has given support in the past, and we challenge the people that haven't learned more about our organization, support us in whatever ways you can afford, mm -hmm. whether it be financial or with your time. Yeah, and I mean, the Mental Health Association is there for people as a resource. So if you're in a bad place, you need somebody to talk to, if you just need someplace to go and get some stuff off your chest, I mean, that's what the funding is there for. It's for support for the, the community in any way that you need it. So I mean, it's a really awesome, I mean, right now is a terrible time to talk about this kind of stuff. I want this to be an upbeat presentation, but I mean, mental, mental health is such an important part of your happiness. So, you know, the resources are there. Um, thank you so much for everything you do for the community. And, you know, together, I know we're a force to be reckoned with. So let's just keep kicking ass, man. Right? We will. Yeah. We absolutely will. Speaking of kicking ass, I'd like to introduce our first guest today. My client, Andrew Lohr with uh, Honest Air. He's uh, the owner of Honest Air. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Jump on in there. Put on some headphones. <laughs> Can you hear yourself in the mic there? Yeah. There yeah. we go. There we go. So one of the things that I love about Andrew is that he's a hunter. And uh, that's how we kind of connected, honestly, is through hunting. His so his Facebook profile picture, he is, like, in the back of a pickup with a gun and a, a mason jar full of moonshine. And I was like, all right, if that man's owning a business, I need to know what he's doing and how we can work together. <laughs> so <laughs> here we are. <laughs> yeah, no, hunting's always been a passion of mine. You know, uh, just when I was a kid, you know, hunting with my dad and stuff. And, you know, it obviously creates great friendships and you know it's not just about the hunting it's a way of life and mm -hmm. you know I, I love it i do and you went on your first seek a deer hunt this year right yeah yeah we um <laughs> told me that like tell a, everybody that story we did like a spontaneous sick of deer hunt in in the middle of january i don't know who does that but that's what we did um and uh it was crazy so i'm used to hunting like southern ohio um you know here in maryland um and so I show up there, of course, you know, to hunt the marshes and stuff. And it was just a crazy experience, uh, something I've never done. You know, it's very, I feel like it's it's very uh, just different. You know, it was it was crazy. Every day was a different. And um, you, like, went in over your head almost in the mud, right? You yeah, made yeah. it a one wrong was, move. <laughs> I, was, I was walking through the marsh to my spot in the middle of this this one tree in the middle of the two miles of marsh. And that's where I was headed. And, yeah, totally stepped and uh, got a little wet. That was... Uh, <laughs> Oops. Not expected, especially <laughs> when it's 20 degrees outside. That was terrible. <laughs> but you said that the, the seeker deer, like, bugle, like elks? Yeah, yeah. So, so you could hear them? It's a wild noise. Uh, so do you, like, call, like, rattle and call like you do with whitetail? I think so. I wasn't doing it because, you know, it wasn't really a rut time or anything like oh, that. Okay. You know, I was just sitting there praying that maybe something will walk by in the middle <laughs> of this huge marsh. <laughs> you know, just hoping and praying. I was like, this does not look good. But, you know, they were there, and, uh, you know, uh, one of the guys was able to kill, and uh, another guy was in a great situation where he could have killed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but it just, you know, did, couldn't connect the dots on it. But, you know, it was it was super awesome experience. It was you know, a fun sometimes, experience, yeah. yeah. You know, it's not always about killing. I, you know, I spend so much time out there not, you know, just just being in nature and, and trying something new. And that's my piece. That's where, like, I go to exit life when things are crazy. Mm -hmm. and, you know, just reset for a minute, turn the phone off. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's I know awesome. there's a lot of times where we'll have questions about work because I help him with social media and we'll be messaging and we'll be like, I'm in the tree stand. Yep, me too. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, uh, another thing that's crazy to me. How old are you? I'm 29. 29. And you 29. own your business. Yes. And how long have you had this business? We've been in business now going on five years. 
um, you know, I, I made a crazy decision when I was younger just to, you know, take a leap. And, uh, you know, fortunately, I was actually working another job that allowed me to start this business mm -hmm. um, and build it to the point of where, you know, things got crazy. And one day I just walked in the office and I was like, hey, I got to go do this thing, you know, 100 percent. And it was it was a wild jump. You know, just the whole process in general, looking back is uh, has why, been awesome. why age back. Um, so family, family yeah. yeah. So uh, you know, my family has always been intertwined in the union. Um, you know, for doing HVAC, and uh, you know that's where I started too. My dad, you know, taught me so much, um, mm -hmm. and I was an apprentice for him. And you know, I, I just yeah, I just took it to the next level. You know, it's funny. I remember being in uh, being younger, and my dad always told me when I was learning this trade, I thought I'd never learn it. You know, and he always said he was like you know, you're going to, you're going to take this thing to a whole new level, yeah. um, you know, and he was, my dad is very well known and, and super successful in the industry. Um, you know, in the industry, I'm known as junior, you know, it's, <laughs> it's not Andrew, you know, so it's, and, and that's part of me, I guess, starting my business and, you know, I had to kind of create my own identity. And so, yeah, just took a jump. Yeah. So, so why the name Honest Air? So honestly, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, I feel like it really portrays what I wanted to do with this business. You know, it's not all about heating and air conditioning. I love to help people, you know, and I love to go out and, and treat people and give them, you know, that honest opinion, that honest feel. You know, it's not always about making money. It's about doing the right thing and what's right for these people to, you know, to get them fixed and get them back up and running, you know. And, and, and yeah, so it, it, for me, it's more of a passion of helping people mm -hmm. and being there when it's 110 degrees outside and these people got two babies in the house and, you know, they can't stay there the night unless we get it fixed, you know, and, and I love being in that situation. I love to help, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and come through and also, you know, just do it in an honest, in an honest way. You know, it, it's not always about making a million dollars every day. You know, it's about going out and doing the right thing and earning a living. And that's why I portray to all my guys you know, that work for me too. You know, we all kind of carry that. First, uh, congratulations Thank um, you. on the business, on your family, yeah. the growing family. Thank you. Um, yeah, and that what about reputation. Your family? Like, yeah, so I got, baby, a little, right? yeah, I got a little boy, Luke. Uh, you know, he's he just turned two January 15th. Um, he's super awesome. Yeah. Uh, Does he go know. hunting with you and stuff? Not yet. Not yet. But he knows, like, you know, he knows how to look out the back door. He knows where the deer are. He knows where the corn pile is. You know, he's out there dumping corn with me. And, you know, kicking it around, and you That's know, cool. so we're easing him in, but yeah. he's right around the corner. I can tell you that much. It's yeah, exciting. I'm pumped about it. You know, having a having a little boy to something you know to share that with. You know, I always call him my little mini me. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's it is. It's it's great. I got to get you this book. Like my one friend, um, John, he actually has a company called Heated Hunts, mm -hmm. and he makes scents and lures and stuff. And he's been building this company for years, right? And his wife to this, this year decided together they were going to write an il illustrated book about hunting for little kids, like a colored color. That's book. awesome. And his this book has like blown his company up, like the book ended up being way bigger than the scents and lures and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> He's well, like, like, what the heck? It's like I said earlier, though, you know, hunting is a, it's also a way of life, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I want my son to, to be able to experience that and to, you know, to learn the ways and, and teach him the way my dad taught me, you know, and, and build those qualities and integrity and, you know, that kind of stuff that comes with it. Yeah. So, so do you think that he's gonna pass on the HVAC gene also? I mean, we'll see. You know, <laughs> I I want him to do whatever he wants to do. You mm -hmm. know, and, and and find an interest and run with it. And if it's the business, and that's great. You know, I'm gonna work my butt off to get this business to a position to where if that's what he wants to do, you know, it'll be successful for him. You yeah. know, that's that's my goal. I I started this from the ground up. You know, on a on a wing. Um, you know, I never went to college. I didn't have any business experience. I knew how to how to fix air con heating and air conditioning units, you know, mm -hmm. and and then I just took it, you know, and, and learned, made a lot of mistakes, you know, but learned a lot of lessons and learned a lot, too. So that's that's the number one thing. That's life. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's life. And you're really super hyper local to Mount Airy. Right. Like, I mean, it's not like you don't do work out of the area, but yeah. I think that that's where you're the most known. Right. Yeah. Mount so, area. yeah, Mount Airy, Damascus, that area is kind of where we started our network, you know, and I've worked. I, I try to build that small town feel, you know, and, 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 and you know, build that network of people there. And, and you know, yeah, we we're branching out, you know, we, we go everywhere, but we try to bring that Mount Airy small town feel to wherever we go, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, and try to, you know, 
we're not the big dogs in town, but you know we're we're forced to be reckoned with, and you know we're we're out there doing it too, and and trying to provide that same service. So, yeah, and like I know what I've seen is that it's harder. Like new houses, new construction is like on a total decline right now because yeah. of materials, like supply and demand. You can't get wood, you can't get metal, you can't get anything. So, are you seeing more? people remodeling and putting money back into their houses right now than you would have in the past, you think? Yeah, so there's a little bit of everything going on right now. And and honestly, you know, I'm so happy my decision when I started this was to try to be as versatile as possible, you know, to have a be in the commercial work, to be in the new construction, to be able to do service and maintenance, because with COVID going on, it's a really weird time right now. And, uh, you know, every week it's something different. You know, a commercial project will pop off and then we'll start to kind of get slow and then a house will be being built, you know. Um, but there is a decline. And in, in some areas, you know, commercial has definitely stepped down a lot. Um, mm-hmm. We're coming back now. We're bidding projects and stuff. Residential took off um, with COVID. You know, we had our biggest year yet this year. Um, I mean, we, we, we grew, we doubled in size, you know, and business growth. So mm-hmm. it's it's... You know, we, we actually did very well during this COVID time in that aspect. But, um, yeah, commercial's definitely falling off. And pricing, obviously, with materials is just going through the roof. So mm-hmm. it's going to hurt the consumer a little bit. Mm-hmm. But Hey, you got to keep moving forward, right? Like, yeah. things are just moving forward at a different pace and in a different way, I think. That's what I'm seeing is that it might not be as much new construction, but people are still putting that money into, like, investing in their properties and, definitely. and you know, fixing stuff up. And HVAC is such a big investment. You know, it, mm-hmm. it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a... Uh, a large chunk of money, you know, but there's so many energy savings with it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many benefits to to upgrading that system that's 20 years old. And, and, you know, things have come so far in the industry in the last 20 years. Technology is just, you know, going crazy and efficiencies have gone crazy. So, you know, it's definitely a good thing to do. And, and, you know, the savings that you get out of it is Mm -hmm. is crazy. And do you guys have financing, like, options for people so they don't have to, like, come up with the whole thing up front? Oh, yeah, yeah. So we offer financing. And, you know, we we do things a couple different ways payment-wise. But, yeah, we do have a financing plan to help people out. Um, You know, and like I said, pricing-wise for us, we're super competitive. You Mm -hmm. know, it's one of my theories is, you know, is trying to be super competitive, not make a million dollars on each job. You know, I'm there to make an honest living and – you know, put food on the table and for my guys and, you know, my son, but I'm also not out there to take advantage of anybody either. So cool. Yeah. yeah. That's what I've seen. Like basically going out, I'd like go to a few job sites and like see them interacting with the clients and taking pictures and stuff. And you can tell they actually know each other. Like they know the kids' names and they know like everything. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 I'm super lucky that I got great guys that, you know, follow the same philosophy that I do. You know, my lead guy, Ryan, I mean, just is amazing, yeah. you know, in so many ways. And, you know, he, when he started with me, he knew nothing about this industry whatsoever. And, you know, he was like a sponge just soaking it up right by my side. And, you know, now today he kind of runs things on the residential side and it's kind of taken the face over a little bit of, you <laughs> yeah. know, of, of the business. He said all it. the social media stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's in all these pictures and stuff and he's like, and I'm like, man, just roll We're with it. making him into know? memes and everything. And he's like, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. yeah, I'm like, you know, just just roll with it. And, you know, yeah. he's just he literally just sport. took it and ran, you know, and his his customer service and his relation, how he develops relationships with people is just the same thing. Just amazing. You know, he walks in a room and he just has that sense, you know, yeah. and, and can connect with people, um, which is, like I said, great. And same thing with my other guys, Steve and, and, and Devin and Nick, you know, Devin and Nick are the young guys coming up. You know, they're 20. And I, I'm a big believer in developing guys. You know, I love to train. I love to take young guys in and be like, look, just stand next to us and learn, you know, and I'll make you into whatever you want to be. You know, it's just it's it's up to you on what you want to be and how great you want to be. You know, and I I got that from my dad. It was his always philosophy in business as well. Hire the person and train them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. It's 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 a it's fun. It's a lot of fun. So what's in the future, near future? big future plans any anything coming up like are you expanding growing yeah so so we actually are expanding a little bit you know uh can't say too much right now but we're actually looking at bringing in the sheet metal division um you know there is some works on that hopefully that works out you know and that presence is going to be in the frederick area so you know there there's a lot of irons in the pot and you know and and i'm looking at all right what's the next move you know where do we go with business but also trying to be strategic about it and make good business decisions and not grow too fast. So, you know, we, we got a couple plans on the outlook. You know, we're going to start on uh, advertising, you know, with, with you, Caroline, which mm-hmm. obviously you're amazing. I mean, such a blessing to us. And, uh, 
when you came on, I mean, you've really just helped so much. Thanks. Um, you know, and, and, but we're going to take that and start doing, like, some specials each month and, you know. Cool. Um, try to take yeah, it to the next level. we got a new level. website. Yeah, we got yeah. a promo video. I'm telling you. We got, I mean. <laughs> he's sponsoring. So we're doing this virtual outdoor expo, too, and that's coming up in a few more weeks. And they're one of the sponsors and vendors at that event. So you can go to their booth and, like, you know, l- learn more about the business. Check out the new website. Links will be in there for that. And Yeah. yeah. Cha-ching. <laughs> Moving on up. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's great. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. You know it, the sky's like, every year it's just like, man, how much more can this thing grow? And, and mm-hmm. every year I'm just, I'm, I sit back, you know, December 31st and just look back and I'm like, man. Like, how did I do that? Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's absolutely crazy. But, you know, um, getting a bunch of good relationships and getting help, you know, and, and, and putting things in place like you doing my advertising and, you know, um, just, you know, trying to just build this thing, you know. Yeah. You're doing great. And yeah. just keep building those relationships, you know. That's yeah. that's where it's at. Definitely. So for sure. All right, awesome. Well thanks for coming and hanging yeah, out. For having I'm me. gonna this is awesome. kick you out of here. Yeah. Get nice on to meet out you. Here. Yeah, you too. Thanks you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, what do you think? Pretty cool guy, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. Great I'm really to blessed to have awesome clients like him and, and you, you know, that I get to work with and also get to know a little bit. So Another friend of mine is here, which I'm really excited to introduce. Um, Billy, if you want to come up and hang out with us for a few minutes. So Billy is um, from Antietam Brewery, as well as Benny's Pub. He is a total rock star. I love him to death. One of my favorite people in the whole entire world, honestly. We've had so much fun together. Thanks for coming and doing this with me today. yeah. Yeah. So what's going on, man? What's going on over at Antietam Brewery? Waiting to get back out on that patio. Some nice warm weather should be good for the business. Completely. We also did. Um, Come over this way a little bit. There we go. There we go. We did expansions on our, our bright tanks and fermentation tanks recently too. So the the demand for the beer is is definitely there even through. All the COVID stuff, which is great. Everybody loves beer. Yeah. It's probably what's getting us more through and more it. Of it more. I think. <laughs> yeah. We're not going to recognize each other with our beer bellies when we finally see each other again. <laughs> like that movie Wally. <laughs> We've all just um, been quarantined with beer for the last few months. And the pub's been doing well. Mm-hmm. The liquor store's been doing good. Um, there were some hairy moments, but it's all looking up and now. Uh, I'm excited to be a part of your expo because this is going to be one of the big first things that we've done in a while. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to have happy hour event with some live entertainment mm-hmm. at Benny's Pub. It's going to be Friday the, what would it, March 5th? Friday, March 5th. Um, we're going to have Shane Gamble there performing live. I think the Hub Show is going to be there broadcasting live from the event. So we'll have some, it's going to be like a VIP event, but it's going to be fun to have some people together for the first time in a long time using our yeah. social distancing practices, but still having a blast. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that it'll too. It'll be safe, but it'll be good. Yeah, safe, but good yeah. for sure. So Billy and I have done a few pretty exciting things together over the years. We've been wine judges together. Um, uh, do you think we're going to get to go back to doing any of that t- stuff anytime soon? I Did they so. just sell I that? Think- did they just sell that? To the events, uh, the wine events are still going to go on, I think, this summer at the Agriculture Center. So Good. I hope. If they're there, uh, we should be getting an invite. I thought right. we did a Blue good Mountain. job. Yeah, I think we did a good job drinking <laughs> <Yeah>. the wine. <laughs> I feel like we did well. I feel like, John, you could probably do well at that, too. I think I could <laughs> have some fun. some wine. Yeah. Yeah. Sounded so like you've a never good time. Ha- been to Benny's, right? I have not. Yeah. I've heard really good things oh, about yeah. the beer mm-hmm. and Tatum. Right, I mean, good. really good things. Yeah, we ha- uh, have a new brewmaster that we brought on two years ago, I want to say. Mm-hmm. He was actually from Vanish. A lot of people are familiar with the Vanish Brewery. Mm-hmm. It's a bigger one in Virginia. Um, and he's got a lot of great contacts and a lot of great ideas and just freshened some things up. Mm-hmm. We were, and uh, you guys kind have of a couple old- of new beers coming out, right? Oh, yeah. 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 I was just looking at that. We have our hazy, uh, it's called Afterburner. It's a hazy IPA. Okay. But the hops that they use in it kind of have almost like a chili effect to it. So you mm-hmm. get a little warm tingle. Like spicy a little Yeah, bit. but it's a hazy too. So you get a little tropical notes and then you, it finishes with a little a little Afterburn. I which like. I'm excited to try that one. I haven't seen that it. It awesome. just, they're canning it right now. Okay. So. So how did you guys get into making beer? Like, how did this start? Where did this all so come actually from? started with my dad. So me and my dad have been working together the whole time. It's been 14 years now. 
he uh, and his wife at the time were big into making craft beer. That's what they did. And they started by uh, opening up a bar, Benny's Pub, which at the time sat 60 people. Now seats 160 people. So yeah. it's was just it at grown. the same location? The same whole time? location, yes. Yeah, and that's where you guys used to make beer. Yeah, too. and then we, right. yep. So that was the plan. We said, well, we'll start a, a a pub, and if the pub does well, maybe we can make our own beer in it one day. And then, mm-hmm. and then we did that. We started Antietam Brewery inside Benny's Pub, and that was oh a while ago. And, and then it grew, and it kind of overtook the pub, and some of the pub customers didn't really like that. <laughs> it's like huge, big tanks. Yeah, I was sitting right. Because I made that video good. years ago with your old brewmaster. Yeah. In, and I came and watched him yeah. make beer and everything, and that was before Daniel. You, it was yeah, when Daniel was there, mm-hmm. before you moved the tanks to the other space. Yep. And before you even put them in the back, it was before any of that. We and were right. So in the how many was that? How many years ago was that? Six years ago, probably, yeah, at least. I think so. Yeah. And I think the brewery has had, now it's got its own location because it did overtake the pub mm-hmm. and uh, on Western Maryland Parkway. And uh, it's yeah. really big, mm-hmm. huge production it's area. It's awesome. It's huge, such a cool space. Yeah, it's huge like, outdoor seating yeah, area that they're always expanding. And darts and our like, chef, they took our chef, though. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, the brewery took our pub chef. George is out there now. <laughs> And uh, he makes great food. Yeah. Yeah, really, really good. Kind of weird food. Good, mm-hmm. but like, beer food. Okay. And people are loving that. So. I know, like, the steak and cheese and the french fries and stuff at Benny's have always been one of my favorites. Those are, yeah, those are classics. Those won't and then change. The, the burgers. Hot dog. F- the burgers. Yeah, the Magma Burger. We have the award winning burger. Mm hmm. And Hagerstown. Some of the what time best do you food. open? Yeah, we should go there for lunch after this. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Three yeah. today. Oh, Not until three. But um, the yeah, wings, maybe next time. the wings are amazing too. Yeah, mm-hmm. we always got a secret sauce on the menu. So if you're at the pub and if you like hot sauces, ask what the secret sauce is. It's something different. Every, raspberry, every, oh. raspberry rampage right now. Ooh, mm-hmm. that sounds good. Yeah, Trinidad scorpions. You had me at wings. Yeah, the wing, <laughs> I like mine. Seriously, plain. I, I like, like mine plain. Don't tell me. Really. <laughs> I like spicy, but not so spicy, spicy that I can't enjoy them. You know yeah. what I mean? Like no, no, if no. I need to dip it in my beer to deal with it, it's not gonna work. For me. As long like, as it's not the afterburner spicy beer, right? right? So I have a personal question. Yeah. Where did the name Benny's come from? So Benny was my brother, mm-hmm. and uh, when I was eight, he was six years old. He died of brain cancer. Mm-hmm. Sorry and to hear that. Yeah. So we, it's an homage to him, and everything that we do at the pub is very family orientated we've got a couple brothers and sisters that work there um cousins everything it's a very big family place and a lot of the employees have been there for eight years ten years so it's nice i love coming in there i know everybody there still i'm like i walked in the other day and everybody's like caroline i'm like oh my gosh i feel like i'm in cheers and that's crazy (laughs) that's crazy for a bar and restaurant to have staff Mm -hmm. for that long yeah and we have uh we've got a picture of ben Yep. In the dining room across from the bar. I kind of knew, but I wanted to yeah. <laughs> But uh, I think he's our little angel. We've had a lot of great blessings and surprises and mm-hmm. some hairy times that we managed to scrape through, and I don't know how. And right. and you guys can... do a lot. Like, you sponsor a hockey team. Right? Oh, yeah, hockey team. Uh-huh. Um, we did uh, a lot of different uh, tournaments at throughout town we do different things mm-hmm. um we, we had a big we used to do a big wiffle ball tournament and since the rona we haven't really talked about it but yeah. at the city stadium the huge wiffle ball tournament people will be playing wiffle ball all day there set up three different diamonds yeah. you guys do like beer pong tournaments and stuff at the brewery don't you uh, I last year you did some cornhole, cornhole. yeah, yeah cornhole lots of cornhole the brewery does a ton of events they yeah. did the a jeep drive-in which i think was maybe the only jeep drive-in in hagerstown did i that I, I know of. yeah it was a huge turnout a lot of people packed there wasn't awesome. room for more people we That's had to turn awesome. them away yeah. uh, volkswagen air cool drive-in so that was interesting. I didn't even know what that meant or what that was. <laughs> My but brother would have loved that. Really? Yeah, he's yeah. all about Volkswagens and stuff. So they yeah. came from all over. Uh, mm-hmm. There were really dingy ones, and then there were really fancy ones. So it was neat. I just want to see. Wow. Um, we do the Hero Fest event, uh, which is for the first responders in the area. Mm-hmm. Um, Make yeah. a special beer for that. And you guys have that special beer that's like the first responder beer, right? Yeah, and like, we what saw is it then. called? Um, I don't remember what we called it. It's something like Lad or something or something. I can't remember. This, well, in our 1605, our Irish red that Antietam always makes, 
proceeds okay. of that always go to the 1605 firefighters, mm -hmm. and that's Hagerstown firefighters. We've done that for Years. since the beginning. That's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah, 1605. Yeah, 1605. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's pretty cool, right? That's incredible. Yeah. So. Yeah, beer and giving back and fun. Yeah, doesn't get much better than that. I don't know. And now that. you can walk right from the restaurant into Benny's to go. Yeah, the liquor store. And grab a bottle of whatever, mm -hmm. sixer, and head on home. The beers maybe. that I mentioned, and yeah. a ton of other craft beers. And what is the thing I always say it wrong? Growlers. The Crowler Station. Oh, crawler the Crowler Station. station. Yeah, crawler it was a Growler Station. It was. Um, now people are filling Crowlers, which is like a big giant can of beer. It's like 32 ounces of beer, and you can fill that at the brewery. Um, and because our brewery does contract brewing for other breweries, Mm. Um, you can get beer for um, other different breweries there too. So there's always oh, a really good variety. That's cool. Mm -hmm. One final question: yeah. What's your best sour? Sour or cellar? Sour. Our best sour was Cranboy. Cranboy. Yeah, Cranboy was uh, cranberry sour, and we used a, lo a lot of breweries now are kind of stealing creative content or different art or like feel good like making the beer art look like video games or mm -hmm. movies. So there like that was Saved by the Bell one, you remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Well, so we the Cran Boy looked like Vault Boy. I don't know if any of you play Fallout, mm -mm. but there's the Vault Boy, and we were getting phone calls from around the world of people wanting really? to see, to, to buy the can. Marketing. Yeah, marketing. marketing. Luckily, it's uh, Bethesda Software, which isn't far from us, and they found out that we had used their art a little okay. and they were stoked and they're like why didn't you get us some beer because we weren't sure how that was gonna yeah, go but that was our like most popular one that's Cranboy. awesome yeah cool well i mean thanks for coming yeah thanks oh for next time i'll bring show. beer yes i like bring that beer. Uh -huh. coffee beers for morning if you want Ooh, you can just bring baileys i'm not gonna judge you i have that at the store okay <laughs> well, I just crying. Well, so both of you, thank you, and Andrew also, for being a part of my Outdoor Expo. I'm just going to talk real briefly about that because, honestly, I've just been pouring so much into this event. And Before you do, can I say something yeah, real quick? Yeah, you better say whatever you want. I think I'm speaking for our two guests and myself, and you keep saying you're blessed to have us. We're blessed to have you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Oh, John, you're just such a sweetie. <laughs> So, yeah, here we go. <laughs> but, um, yeah, on a serious note, this event that I'm putting together is, it's just going to be amazingly huge. We have, like, 70 vendors that are going to be at the event. So all these different vendor booths will be available. The big thing I want to push is that if you buy a ticket right now, all the proceeds go to Battle 22 and the Dark Horse Project. Both of those are nonprofit organizations that are supporting veterans. One of them gets veterans out in the woods hunting. Um, the other one gets first responders and veterans, you know, um, access to hunting. And Battle 22 helps with prevention of suicide. So suicide prevention with veterans. Um, right now, an average 22 veterans commit suicide a day, and they're doing a lot, everything they can to prevent and give them service and support. So again, I'm a big, I'm a big you know, contributor to the Mental Health Association locally to help with mental health. But I do think that there's national programs, you know, find something that you care about and give back to it. It feels good to give back. It feels really good to give back. And if you give back, you get back a lot more in return. So um, I just wanted to take a few minutes to emphasize that my event is coming up fast. If you buy your tickets, it's only 12 bucks. All that money goes to both of those nonprofits. And on top of that, you get entertainment, um, live entertainment on Friday from Shane Gamble. And then Saturday, we're going to have the Amish Outlaws performing live stream and Tyler Farr performing on Saturday also. So it's a big entertainment just for the tickets alone. That is worth it. And then you get entered into all these different door prizes. So we're going to be giving away binoculars, air rifles. Um, I've got a Matthews bow that's worth like $2,000 with the whole setup, and that's one of the door prizes. So just by buying your $12 ticket, you're supporting these two nonprofits. You get into this event for 34 days long online. You can go around and look at all this stuff. If you don't have time that weekend to go back, you can go 30 days after the event and check everything out. Go check out the booths for my friends that are here. Um, support them and also you know give back in your own way and maybe win something at the same time i mean it's fun it's gonna be a fun event it's a win for everybody it's a gift that keeps on giving it really is <laughs> so 
I'm excited about that, obviously. If you have questions, feel free to just message our page or hit me up personally. Ask me anything you want. If you want to get involved as a vendor, we still have plenty of time to set up more booths. Um, if you want to get involved as a donor, just donate to Battle 22 or the Dark Horse Project. I would love to have, you know, any opportunity to raise more money for them. So without further ado, I guess I'll just say thank you guys, you know. John, thanks again for coming. I really appreciate your support and everything that we do together. It's always fun to work with you. Thank you for and having Andrew, me. thanks for coming and, you know, coming and sharing some of your story. And hopefully we'll get to go hunting together soon, right? And Billy, you know, thanks for being a good friend and Absolutely. bringing beer soon. next time. Yeah, I will. <laughs> Lots of it, too. <laughs> yeah, so thanks again for joining us. Uh, we'll be here every Tuesday, 10 o'clock. Um, this was our first run, so we came on a little bit late, but next week we'll be on time, and we hope to see you there. So thanks again. Adios. Bye, guys. <laughs> Well, if you haven't picked up your tickets yet for the Virtual Outdoor Expo, you're going to want to because we are about to give away a door prize for early birds. We're going to draw a ticket on February 15th at the Maryland Arsenal Grand Opening. You could win a seven-night getaway. The early bird door prize winner will be selected on 215, so get your tickets today. You're automatically entered to win this and tons of other awesome prizes when you purchase your ticket for the Medina Media Virtual Outdoor Expo. Plus, the ticket sales go toward raising money for Battle 22 and the Dark Horse Project. And live entertainment, hello! The event is right around the corner, kicking off March 4th, streaming live each day until the 7th and active for you to revisit for another 30 days with musical performances by Shane Gamble, the Amish Outlaws, and country star Tyler Farr. So get your tickets today and be entered to win this door prize and tons more. So make sure that you check out our Facebook event page and stay tuned for more details.